Welcome so much uh, to today's webinar on academic resources across campus for the School of Continuing Studies. I'm Betsy Malarsic. I'm a learning skills specialist with the Academic Resource Center. And feel free uh, during this webinar to ask any questions that you have in the chat. So we're just going to be going over a few major resources today. We're going to be talking about the SCS Writing Lab, the library, and then Academic Resource Center, Academic Resources. Uh, but we are going to be going over these resources in depth and talking about some of the different components available uh, to you as SCS students. So first, we are going to start talking about the Writing Lab, which the SCS Writing Lab, its main goal is to provide writing workshops and individual tutoring specifically for SCS students. This means that the tutors and employees who work at the Writing Lab are familiar with your coursework, and they're familiar with the more professional formats that are often needed by SCS assignments. So at the Writing Lab, students can schedule appointments and bring writing assignments and have them looked at by a pair of eyes who are is someone not affiliated with the course but familiar with the SCS. So when you attend um, a writing lab appointment, the SCS tutors are going to be focusing on big picture aspects of your writing assignments. So they'll be looking at flow of a paper, your thesis, cohesion. What the writing lab doesn't do is act as a proofreading double, triple spell check. That is not the goal of the SCS Writing Lab. Having said that, if you are a student who is working on developing um, language skills, English writing skills, and you have recurring grammar problems, that's something that they would be happy to talk through with you, but they aren't going to focus on um, proofreading specifically. The overall goal here is yes, to help you improve your individual piece of writing that you take to the writing lab, but it's also to work on improving who you are as a writer. So the tutors typically are going to work with you to try to focus on what big picture issues can you take away to be a better writer for the future. So when did you reach out to the Writing Lab? The really best way to think about this um, in terms of reaching out is when you need help reaching the next level of your paper writing process. So sometimes students think that you need to go to the Writing Lab with a fully completed essay. And that is not necessarily the case. Um, in fact, sometimes a more successful writing lab appointment might be when you have an assignment and you don't know where to start. So you can go in with nothing more than a writing prompt and use that session to help you develop ideas. You can also go in with that list of ideas and use it to help develop, develop a thesis. Essentially, you want to go when you Want to bump yourself from one part of the process to the next, whether that be draft one to final copy or whether that be from outline to essay. One important note about um, reaching out to the writing lab is that you do want to make sure that you have time to work through any feedback that you receive from your appointment. So you might have an essay and you have questions about the citations and then you take your essay into the writing lab and the tutor has a completely different concept of what you need to be working on. And but your essay is due in two hours. That's not the best usage of the writing lab. Um, because in a perfect world, you would have time to work on those parts. So I think a good way of thinking about the writing lab is that it's never too early to reach out, but it can be too late. If an essay is due in 20 minutes, then you aren't really going to be able to do that after an appointment. However, if 
you don't know how to start with your essay, it isn't too early. Sometimes I tell students to make a writing lab appointment as soon as they get the writing prompt and as soon as they get the assignment, because then they have this source of external accountability that's going to help them make sure that they're taking time to work on this paper earlier than they would usually. The writing lab has both asynchronous and synchronous appointments. Um, and these are a completely different way of approaching um, writing center sessions. So the synchronous appointment is what you might think of as a typical writing center assignment. You meet one-on-one -on -one with a writing consultant for 30 minutes. And then what during those 30 minutes, you bring up your questions. It's a conversation. Um, right now, all of those writing center appointments are occurring over Zoom. Um, so it's very in the moment, brief conversation. The asynchronous appointment is completely different. You upload a paper online, submit it, and then you receive written feedback on your assignment. So you may never actually have that individual um, conversation. Instead, your feedback is going to come in written form. So is there a reason to do one over the other? Um, it really depends on where you are in the writing process. Um, for the asynchronous appointment, where you submit a paper online, you obviously need to have something um, written to receive feedback on. So that could be an outline. Um, it could be a full draft. Maybe you don't know how to fully develop your ideas and you want to submit the entire um, paper that you have with a specific question that you can include. Uh, you can include specific questions in terms of um, how can you push it to the next level? Which ideas can you develop? Um, so asynchronous appointments, you definitely need written content and you also do need time. Um, you need to submit the written product. I believe it's at least 48 hours uh, before you should expect to receive it back. Um, so this is really for someone in the second half of the writing process. Um, synchronous appointments in which you're having an in-person conversation. There is no need to, um, there's no need to do this for earlier versus later. There's no preference. You can do this kind of appointment at any time, but this is going to be um, super beneficial for folks who are in the earlier brainstorming parts of their paper writing process. So if you are brainstorming, if you have a lot of questions, more than um, just one specific question, and you want feedback on multiple specific ideas, then this might be the better option. So making an appointment, um, we are going to jump up to the Writing Lab um, website just so you can see how easy this is. And they've got a great summary right here of all of their offerings um, that will see um, seem pretty familiar after this presentation. Um, we, I see here the question, can you do more than one appointment per project? You can do more than one appointment per project. Um, I believe that they have a limit on how many um, appointments you can do within a certain period of time. So yeah, so I will put this link go, into the chat. So this is the website for all of this. Um, up here, um, I'll start by going to the asynchronous, just because I believe with asynchronous, I think there's um, a limit for sure. Um, so this is kind of where we go over everything I just mentioned. And if you scroll down to the bottom, um, there is a form. Um, what they note here for asynchronous is students may only request asynchronous help once every 48 hours. 
So with that in mind, that just means every few days. So there's a limit, but you can definitely, again, continue to reach out to this um, resource again and again. So we have information about the class and the assignment. And I think it is good to note that down here, um, we have this uh, asterisk part, what would you like your tutor to pay special attention to in this assignment? Do you have any questions or concerns? So this kind of goes back to the, the idea that with asynchronous, um, you have less control over many, many questions. This is really for someone who doesn't know what needs work or just has one or two simple questions. So there's also a few other features um, that the writing lab has. One of them appears to be brand new and it looks excellent. I'm very excited um, to see this. But this semester, they're offering presentation practice. So if you have any presentations, um, you can sign up for one of these practice sessions uh, between February 28th and March 16th, or between April 19th and April 27th. Again, I think this is a fairly new initiative. So right now, they're just doing it for the midterm and final period. Um, how it works is you, um, on their website, can sign up, and we'll see if that uh, sign up's up yet, I can't remember, and you will be giving your presentation to someone who works for the writing lab alongside other students who might be practicing their presentation. So part of this might be that you're also going to watch another student's presentation, but then you will also get some specific feedback. So this is a really excellent resource, um, but that you can sign up for just up here in the same underwriting consultation, the same drop down for presentation practice. Um, so if we click on here, we have a similar sign up. Um, yeah, and the slots are already here. So. If you have a major presentation coming up, again, I would recommend if you know that that's happening, um, go ahead and book it now. It'll force you to start on it earlier. Um, if you are a procrastinator like I am, uh, sometimes it can be helpful to have like a fake deadline and sometimes writing lab appointments or potentially presentation appointments can be really helpful for that. And then I also wanted to plug their lunch hour webinars, um, which here is their um, schedule for these during the semester. Um, these are primarily related to research um, specific topics and how to include that um, in your writing. So the information on how to join these is on the website as well. Um, and the first one's February 1st, but if, this is a topic that you need more help with. I think this is a really great resource to reach out to. And that's also a really good segue into moving on to our next resource, which is the SES Library, which is located next to the um, writing lab. They're both located on the lower floor of the SES, but I know that many of us don't um, go in person <laughs> to the SES these days. Uh, but they're located on the, I believe it's the seafloor, um, near where I think there was once a cafe. I've never seen it in operation myself. These have been a dark few years. <laughs> um, so what services does the SCS library provide? Um, it provides book checkout hours on campus, um, including access to materials from neighboring institutions. Um, so something that's really important to note is that SES and Georgetown are part of a larger um, consortium of libraries that includes American University's library, George Washington's library. Um, so all of these libraries, it can take a little bit of time to get a book, but you can request a book from a neighboring institution's library and those books can be transferred to the physical library. So um, you don't have to go to those other libraries necessarily. Um, 
So there are, right now, there are limited in-person book checkout hours. Um, that's because of campuses uh, working remotely again, but I believe right now it's once a week on Fridays, you can kind of set up a time to go check out your books if you have physical books that you need. Um, there's also a digital media center, um, which from which you can reserve certain um, digital media materials that can help you with any projects. Um, research consultation appointments are extremely helpful. Um, these are appointments in which you can bring your specific research-based assignment to a librarian and the librarian will one-on-one -on -one help you figure out how to do the research. Um, and then also program-specific research guides and tutorials. Um, so these are just lists of databases and materials and programs that might help you based on which program you are enrolled in. So these don't exist for all programs, but they do for many programs. So when should you reach out to the SCS library? Um, I think the obvious answer is when you need materials for a research assignment. Um, it's so easy to use Google or Google Scholar to find uh, materials, um, but you can also um, reach out to the librarians to figure out, as my next bullet says, what the best tools or methods for approaching your specific subject area are. Um, librarians, they know the resources that they have. They are the ones who make the choices to invest in certain databases based on which um, materials they can provide. So they are really the experts on which databases work the best for which subjects. Um, when you want to determine the best tools available for an upcoming research assignment, and also just when your research skills are a bit rusty, um, they can even just help you go over the best way to use search terms, the best um, way to use the library website and to um, investigate their databases. So I want to talk a little bit about the SES library versus the main campus library, um, because Georgetown, as SES students, you also are connected to the main campus um, databases as well. And the big difference, which might seem obvious, is that the SES library, the materials in this campus are more specifically tailored to SES programs, which often SES programs are more professional based. I think sometimes they have more um, active components, more um, in a way that there might be more projects related to the professional world versus papers for a lot of academic subjects. It very much depends on your program, though. Um, and then the main campus library is going to be broader in scope of subjects and materials. That means that there's more to draw from, of course, but it also means that you might get distracted from the materials that really help you. Um, so I always feel like starting at, with the SCS library database is a good place to start. And then if you can't find um, what you need there, then looking through the main campus databases makes a lot of sense as well. So how to make an appointment. Um, so we have, I'll drop this link in here as well, um, just for the library for SCS. Um, so here's our SES portal, um, and what I really just wanted to show you how to make an appointment is for your Zoom research consultation. Also, just want to mention here are the book checkout hours for now. It's Fridays, noon to four. Um, but yeah, on this website, you can click on here, and it's a fairly easy process to set up an individual consultation with a librarian. Um, you can choose the date, you choose the time. Um, and again, these are going to be Zoom consultations. But again, this is a really excellent resource if you have a specific research project and you want some, someone's assistance on how to find the best materials. Um, so a few additional resources to mention 
from the SCS website, uh, SCS library website. Um, so I mentioned they have program specific research guides. Um, they have some videos on how to do specific research for business and management, marketing and communications, and real estate and urban planning. Um, so these are great. I think the, um, the video-based tutorials are extremely helpful. Um, there are also, um, through the main campus library, there are also kind of written guides to more subjects as well. Um, so these are just a little bit more in depth and a little bit more SES tailored. And then um, I also just wanted to mention RefWorks, uh, which is a citation management system. Um, this is a system that can help you save websites and citations and articles as you're doing research. Um, it's a website and account access is available through Georgetown. Uh, the library has tutorials uh, for setting up an account um, on their website as well. So this is a great resource that um, as a student you are provided with access to. So I also just wanted to touch on a few academic resource center um, resources that are available to you. Um, one is just our learning skill worksheets. These provide frameworks, strategies, and suggestions for developing study skills. Um, so study skills are the verb of being a student, right? It's how to nurture your note-taking, your time management, um, your exam prep, those sorts of skills. So these are just, um, and I'll just also drop this link in the chat. These are just free PDFs um, that anyone can access. Um, so here's our time management section and yeah, there, this one's more of a worksheet. Um, some of them are more bullet point set up but on more kind of tips but they are, are organized by topic and again they're free they're pdfs you can take a look through and kind of see which ones are helpful for you um and then i all and there's our website for those worksheets um and then i also just wanted to plug some of our upcoming webinars um, we have our schedule for the semester um, up, so hopefully you know how to find all of this information since you made it to the first webinar. Um, but I, just in case, um, the next one that will be next Tuesday is Keeping Track of Assignments with Google Sheets and Excel. This one's going to be a little longer because it's going to be a little more, a little more technical, but not too technical. It's like Google Sheets and Excel for beginners. Um, and then next Thursday, tips for returning to grad school. So we're just going to be going over some um, ways to help you develop systems for time management, note taking, setting things up um, when maybe you are living multiple lives, working, balancing work and school, trying to remember how to be a student. Um, and again, hopefully you have this website um, because again, you made it here, but if not, here it is again. Um, well, thank you all so much for joining me today and going over some of these resources at SCS. Uh, but yeah, have a great afternoon and let me know if you have any questions.